Hello and welcome to Infinity. Okay, this one is for the geeks. Um, it's about the calculations behind the parabolic luminosity masking that I've been showing one of the macros I've got. I'll go through it again at the end, but first of all, just going to have a quick recap that here we have got a gradient going from black to white, and it's on top of a fill layer so that if I poke a hole in it, I it looks yellow underneath so you can see where it's going. And what I wanted to do was to emulate uh, and make easier the effect where you go to blend ranges here and you, if you pull this down here and you can pull this in here, particularly if you make this a curve, then this goes from black to white, from uh, transparent to opaque. So you can see here this end, these are the lights. So we're keeping the light end of that gradient. And we can control it as well by pulling this up and down. So what I wanted is a mathematical curve that lets me do this relatively simple because procedural texture has got a limited you know, amount of what you can do with it and, and you don't want to get too complex. You see in the ones you buy online that there are sets like you know lights one, lights two, lights three and so on, but this is continuously variable, so you can pick whatever you like. So this in itself is very useful, but I want to be able to extend and make that easier. One of the things with this, by the way, is the way that it decides the luminosity, when it's good, how does it calculate from light to dark? And it uses the what I call 361, which is 30% a red 60% or 59% green and 11% blue and it bounces those and that's how it does that calculation. I wanted to give an option of doing that or something more balanced as well. So the question is how do I do this? How do I get a set of curves that I can use continuously variable to emulate this? Also going up the other way which is the darks curves. So I'm selecting dark so you've got the diagonal straight line here going down from the straight line going up without this thing here of hitting there. Or sometimes it's actually useful to have that. Sometimes you want to pull this across here and so you're, you're selecting all of this chunk here and you're not fading off immediately. And that's what I call hard width. And what you also can do is if I pull this one down here and bring this up here, and this is a mid-tone selection. So you've got a band selected here and you can pull these in here and select this. You've got a fade off here which is represented by this here. And also with this, you, if you pull this down, you get a sort of partial selection. So it's very, very gentle the whole thing, which is sometimes what you want to do. But it'll also be nice if you push this up here, then the parabola will come up, hit the edge there and go up again. Maybe it would be something like if I pull this one over here and I've got two, one going up to that and one going up to there. So you've got like a hard selection in the middle. So this overall width is like soft width. and This is the hard width in there. And then you've got the, you can slide the whole thing up and down. So I want to replicate that in a very easy way to use without having to you know, faff around this. Because what you want to do is put your finger on a slider and just move things up and down whilst watching a picture and going, right, that's the bit that I want to select. OK, let's go on and talk about it now. And I'm going to go to right this. So this is a bit of a bit of a slideshow. But it's it, it illustrates it and fairly yeah, in a colourful way. So there we go. So the problem is to select the lights and dark lights, darks and midtones in a simple way. Um, I've seen blend ranges can do it, but it's a faff if we can get a formula way to do it. And the, the, where we're starting point is parabolas. And um, I don't know if you, ever, if you ever did this in school. I certainly did where you got, you know, a, you can do it on paper. You measure equal either side. If you just take the blue ones here. Just measure equal increments on with your ruler, your draw lines, and you get a curve. You can also do it on a bit of wood with nails and a bits of string. And straight lines creates a curve and the curve is a parabola. You also get parabolas in torches uh, and so on where uh, the light is here and it bounces out and reflects off here. And the other way where you've got 
um, astrological, astrological, astronomical telescopes uh, where you, the, the radio waves from space come in and they all come into a collector point here. But it's a parabola, which is one of those nice, easy mathematical things. Um, you can also meet parabolas in conic sections. You take a, a cone, if you slice horizontally parallel to the base, you get a circle. If you slice on an angle here, cutting through both sides, you get an ellipse. If you slat, slice this way, so the angle here is parallel to one of the sides, that's where the parabola is. And if you slice even further around, that's a hyperbola, which we're not interested in today. So let's start off then with a bit of X and Y's and graphs. So how can we find a formula for this? And the parabola is really, really easy. It is simply Y equals X squared. So in other words, when they're both zero, you're down here. When X is one, then X squared is one. So that goes to Y is one. Then if you carried on, if X is two out here, you'd get all the way up so that Y would be four and so on. And then similarly in the minus way. So you can slide this downwards like this. So and that's simply by taking minus one from there. You can also slide it this way, because what we're going to do is play this to move this, this thing around the place so we can get ourselves a good set of curves with which to use. So there, just a little jiggle again. It's not, no big fancy formula, quite simple. You can flip it upside down, just minus. But what we're interested in is just the difference here between 0 and 1. We don't care what the curve does anywhere else, because we're only going to use it between 0 and 1. And that, because, you know, if that's, that's naught to one, this way is going to be dark black to white or dark to light. And, and that the other way here is from down here, transparent to opaque up there, just like in the blend ranges. So if we take the y equals x squared, it then fits into there quite nicely. So that's a bit of a curve there. If we're going to want to move it, we'll come to that. But then if we flip that round a bit, we can get a curve around this way. So we've got, you know, so the red one's a light's curve and this one's going to be a dark's curve. So that's, you know, y equals one minus x to the, you know, half a square root. You can go around this way and then you can go around this way. So I got ourselves, I got curves going down and curves going up. So I got the full range here for the lights and pulling up and down here for the darks. And I can still go around and play around here. So I've actually got more curves here. So I've got a lot to choose from. So if I just take the lights one here, I've got the basic line here. And if I've got a curve like this, so I'm pulling up here. So I'm going to use this formula up here to go up. And as I come down here, then I've just got this line here is effectively y equals x. And I go down the, the, the beyond this, or I could go this way, by the way. So this is another one. So going upwards, I've got a choice of two curves here. And for lights, it gives me a bit more control to go higher up here. So I'm not so interested in the darks. So I might choose this one here, the green one. So going the other way, I've got the, the two more curves that way that I can choose from. And then, so now you've got how, which curves are you going to use? And I use the ones which are, have a higher effect on the, um, on the lights together. And then, then the, at the other end, I don't care so much about the darks there. So if I got the straight line here, then what I want to do is get some movement there because those are only the, the square curves that gives us a curve, but it doesn't let me move it, pull it up and down. So if I start off with the y equals x squared and if y equals x cubed comes down this way, but it all up here is still useful here. And so even if I get to y equals x to 10, there's in other words, I'm increasing the exponent here and I'm moving this down. In fact, if I use fractional input exponents, I'm going to get a smooth curve all the way down here because this line here is y equals x to the power of one. And then going the other way, you simply play around the exponents going back upwards again. So you've got yourself a smooth set of curves. So you can do with this effectively the, the lights curves 
with one slider effectively because as you move here you're just playing around with exponents which you link then to the, the, the slider. So let's go back up to y equals x squared, squared there and I've turned upside down because my next question is how do I do the midtones? Because we've just looked at how I did the lights and the darks are quite the same, just the other way around. But I need something slightly different with this so that I can get this selection here. So I've got midtones selected and the darks and lights are tailing off there. Slightly more complex formula, but not too difficult. I can pull it in here to select less. So I'm in other words, this is my soft width bringing this curve in. And it's just playing around. All I've changed here is the 4 goes to a 10. That's all for that curve. And I can pull it in again, and that's gone to 100. So in other words, I've got this pulling in, and notice it's going up pretty geometrically here. And a way to handle that is to use an inverse, uh, which will pull things up or some other way. So you can also slide sideways. So I can select different areas here. Here as I'm moving this here. What's the difference? That 0 0.5 there, 0 0.25 there. So that's the very bit you, you change to slide sideways. And go the other way here. Again, that goes up to one here and you select it right to the top there. And in fact, this is, is almost a light type curve. So one we've got here, we can also slide this one up and down. So effectively, because it's going to cut off at one, I'm going to get this selected here all this range here is going to be fully selected and then this drops off and then I can go downwards and as I pull this down effectively it only selects partly so you've got this gap here is not selected so it's only you've got a fainter image doing that. Okay um, just uh, in, out of interest this is what the code looks like for um, procedural texture doing this this is the lights, this is the darks, and those midtones, they're really, really easy. And in fact, it's just this little equation from here, one equals one plus HW, and just those does all that stuff for those midtones, which is quite fab, really. So let's just go back to this one here and do it. So par parabolic lights goes on top here. I take off the one here so I can see through to that, bring up the lights here. And here I've got this part list here, so I've got the lights up here. And as I'm pulling this down and up here, all I'm doing is effectively I'm setting a curve, which is going to go around this way and up and down here. And so I'm pulling the curves up and down. That's all I'm doing with it. And if I pull up the hard width, then it's, it's dragging the point up here. Instead of leaving it on that corner there, it's pulling it in here. So I'm just coming down here, so I'm permanently selecting pieces off that. This one here, the darks and lights. Remember those two options here the, with the, um, the the basic parabola curves, which you could use? That just selects those. So in other words, it gives more bias towards the light when I'm on one. But you can just train change this. You just put your mouse over that and control. To use the mouse wheel to, to, to do that. You'll see a little bit of difference, more difference as you get further out towards the ends. So this will give you a little bit more and so on. It's a subtle thing. And this is how the luminance is calculated. You won't see here because it's just monochrome. But when you've got reds, so the, those two things give you things to a little tweak. Try that and you might get a little bit better selection uh, from what you're trying to achieve. So the darks are the same sort of thing here from the other end. So if I just delete that and start that again. And the midtones here is that one here, remember this is the, the one which goes, goes up and over and down. You can see how far it goes across here. And now I've got the middle slides me up and down here. That was that one formula. The soft width stretches it. So it goes from a up, narrow up and down here to one which goes all the way across. And the hard width, if I go up, it effectively pushes the parabola up beyond the top here. So you get a hard selection in the middle. And if I bring it down, it pulls the parabola down. So you've got a very gentle selection. So this curve in itself, you can do a heck of a lot with. The lights and darks curves 
give you another way of selecting for the lights and darks, which are used by other people in doing things. So that's it overall. I hope that was of interest and uh, thank you very much for watching.